Hey, I got a 45 here. You notice I finished my 45. You saw me working on an FAQ 50, the, the one about magazine springs weakening. Well, it came out pretty well. I'm really happy with mine. You know, the one John made, it's not too bad either. He's pretty handy with a, with a carving stick, a carving tool. And uh, come up and look at these babies. We're proud of them. We're really proud of them. <laughs> uh, I like mine. I like it. Uh, I chose the wood and uh, carved on it for a couple of months. And there it is. Not bad, huh? Not bad for a guy in Tennessee. Actually, you know I'm joking, don't you? I didn't make these things. We're pretty handy, but uh, we've not mastered uh, carving <laughs> to that level, that is for sure. But look at that. Is that something? These are made out of wood. Almost nothing but wood. And uh, they're done by a guy up in uh, Michigan, wrote and asked me if I was interested in... Uh, you know, getting one on uh, T and E. You know, to test and evaluate. <laughs> well, we're not really going to test and evaluate, are we? But I, uh, I looked at it. And I thought, well, went to his website. And I thought, I don't know. We, we want something like that. Uh, viewers might be interested in that. It's, uh, I looked at it and I thought, oh, that sweet sound of gunfire from the neighbors' ranches. <laughs> but I was impressed. I thought, wow, that is amazing. How do you do that? How do you do that? And uh, and long story short, said, yeah, send us one of those. Uh, I think the viewers might get a kick out of that. You know, the classic 1911 made out of just wood. Pretty interesting because it's functional. I could see in the video, <laughs> the slide works, you know, uh, the trigger. Look at that. I don't think it actually fires, but, you know, the grip safety, uh, magazine release. And look at it. The, the magazine is made of wood. Look at that. That only take about 10 years for me to make that. <laughs> There's not a spring in it, but that's a that's a, quite an accomplishment. Look at that dude. Is that something? Let's push out the uh, slide lock. You don't have to retract the slide to do it. That's one of the differences. And even the internals are are very, very close. I'm going to be careful with his gun now. Not drop it in the fire. Not break it. <laughs> You can get the slide off. Okay. And I think even the spring is not made of metal. It's uh, Right now he's using, I don't know, some kind of polymer because he wants to be able to say there's no metal in the gun, I believe. And uh, so it doesn't really matter. You know, firing bullets, you see all the plunger and everything. And then one of the differences is uh, in plunger here comes out the, the opposite way that it does on a regular 1911. But barrel comes out. The uh, Oh, there we go. You see, everything is the bushing is uh, <laughs> legit, authentic. The barrel, 45 caliber. It is plugged. He has to ship them plugged with uh, the plug. He says uh, in the literature that there's probably no problem with someone who has one taking that out, but he's supposed to ship them with that piece of orange in there. And look at that slide and the barrel and, and all that. Is that 1911 uh, ish or what? Can you imagine carving that thing out? even with machinery and everything else that pretty amazing uh he he's just gotten into it he says uh it took him like six what was it 600 hours or something of, of getting all the machinery ready and programmed and, and everything and and then more than that for the specific gun and uh, he puts about 50 hours in machine work on each one and then uh about 50 hours worth of hand work on one you know you got the ceiling the the wood and just all the finish work on it. So just an enormous amount of time to build it. The guy's a, like you said, is a cabinet maker. He makes high-end cabinets and that kind of thing. And he wanted to do something to kind of branch out away from that. And he may make other things, he says, but this is what he's doing. And he might even make some other models, you know, like a Browning BMG or something or minigun. <laughs> no, I think he's going to consider a, possibly a peacemaker, cold single action at some point. But that is a, uh, an interesting piece of hardware. I'm gonna go ahead and try to put it back together. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to be really, really careful with it and not damage it. But uh, it's made of uh, hardwoods, of course. Oh, wrong way. I was putting a Glock back together. It's, uh, he was saying one of the tricks is getting a, a hardwood, you know, that won't split if you've ever worked with wood much. Can you imagine making little pieces like that and uh, not having it split? And then actually in the machinery, holding it so that, you know, you can work on it and saw on it. And everything else, why I have this bullet out here to make sure I push that plunger back up in there. There we go. 
Got spring in, recoil spring. Yeah, slide it back on. And he started with a good, a good one, didn't he? Uh, classic 1911. Uh, that was a good choice. Pretty neat. I just thought you all might find it interesting, and uh, we couldn't resist the little carving in the FAQ. And my guess is some people fell for that, right? A lot of you did not, but some of you did. <laughs> some people, I think, were impressed with my carving skills. Uh, I'm mean. I am so mean. I am terrible. Yeah, so there we go. Back together. Look at that. 1911. Now, he doesn't have the rights to put, like, Colt and that kind of thing on there. He, he may, he's working on some of that, but... Uh, so he, uh, his last name starts with an H. I think that's why he's got that on there on this one. Uh, that one is actually prettier in some ways, I think. I believe this was the first one he made, actually. But that is just amazing. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. This safety works and everything. Let me take the top off that, the case. And uh, this piece here is not necessary, but uh, he said for display purposes, if you want to really hide the, the orange plug in the front of it, you can rest it on that. It doesn't need that. It's uh, actually on a stand that is one of the magazines. So you're really just putting it over the magazine, click, clipping it into the, clicking it into the magazine uh, on the stand. And then you've got your extra one with a big hand in here. You see, that's the, the magazine you would use if you're going to go out and fire it. You know, and then the bullets, you know, look at that 45 caliber bullet. It's funny because uh, I know a couple of people made comments on that FAQ about uh, you need some wooden ammo for it. <laughs> well, we have some wooden ammo for it. <laughs> Is that something? Pretty cool. Pretty cool, huh? I thought maybe you'd just get a kick out of seeing it. Uh, yeah, we're, you know, we don't really do infomercials. We, we just, uh, we're just fascinated by it. And, uh, I like it. I think it's cool. I, I'm not going to buy one, uh, but it's 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 just cool. Uh, anybody that can, can do something that intricately, even with CNC equipment, is uh, that's impressive. I, I have to say, the uh, what do you say? The uh, now they're 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 really costly, of course. My, my gosh, if I was building these things, I would probably <clears throat> I'd sell you one at the brother-in-law price for maybe. Fifty thousand dollars, you know, but uh, they're expensive. They're gonna. I think he says that uh, he's gonna have to sell them for somewhere around twenty-five hundred, and he's got an introductory price of eighteen hundred. You know, that kind of money. So, so there, there's nothing that uh, you know, you know, most most people are gonna be buying or not. But I just thought it'd be interesting to to show because it's one of our favorite firearms and something that is uh, just really a novelty, and it's a gun. I mean, first I said. I don't know, you know, do a wooden gun review. Uh, that's kind of weird. But I, like I say, when I saw the video and I saw the beauty of that wood and that uh, that firearm, or that non-firearm, I, I said, yeah, yeah, send us one if you want to. And he, he sent two. He makes grips, by the way. Uh, so they're kind of specializing in exotic woods, he says. They're, they're getting this ebony and some of these uh, these exotic redwoods that they're making some of the grips and going to be making some of the guns out of as they get into it. There's a, an ebony that's a it's a black wood and a really hard wood. I forget what kind of ebony it was. Or the, there's a special name for it. But he says it makes the gun look, look real. You know? And of course these are not toys, speaking of that. These are you know, they're replicas and they're, they're not something obviously because of the the delicate nature of it and the, although they're more durable than they look uh you know you, you got to be careful with a toy gun as we all know because they can be mistaken for for real so it's nothing you'd uh, you'd want to be especially one with a darker wood it would look more real right but that's uh that's a very interesting piece of hardware i'll have to say i guess you'd call it hardware right they make the display case and everything. I was say that that whole that whole unit there you're talking about over a couple thousand bucks, you know, or, or close to a couple thousand. But it's just neat, you know. Uh, I'm impressed, and uh, and you know, obviously the thought came to mind: we got to do some carving on this thing and fool people with it. And uh, I think we did a couple of people, uh, at least. But pretty neat. I hope you got a good look and uh, inside and out, and probably nothing that you're. Uh, going to put on your Christmas list, but I thought maybe you'd find it interesting that, that someone's actually doing something like this. 
you know, and, and possibly other firearms that would be available, or your favorite Glock, your, uh, your favorite uh, CZ or something, and uh, who knows, maybe your rich aunt will buy you one for Christmas one day. <laughs> but the guy actually is not really in like, full production or anything. He's just getting started doing it, and he said he would send us one if we were interested. I said, send it along, we'll show the viewers, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll pack it. Maybe this will be my new carry gun. So, beautiful works of art beautiful works of art and that's really what I wanted to show you so life is good